What the f is that? That is so fing awesome. What's going on guys? Welcome back. If you're already familiar with our underground racing twin turbo Audi R8 cart, you already know it's ridiculously fast. However, I'm personally more impressed with the fact that it drives like a bone stock car. I've always wanted to visit caffeine and octane in Atlanta and now I have the perfect excuse. Your box is definitely moving back. Okay. This thing moved a lot, man. Yes. This thing moved a lot. Yeah. I figured you couldn't tell. No, I could not. Yeah. When you said, oh, it moved a little bit, I'm like, oh, okay, it moved an inch or two back, and then no. moved all the way back. Seven hours to Charlotte. We got to fill up again, because I'm not doing it here. I'm going to drain the VPN port out of it. Um, so I guess about an hour, we got to fill up. Cool. See you guys then. We are at our first gas stop and unfortunately this is no longer going to be a 1500 horsepower road trip it's going to be like a 1000 1100 horsepower road trip somebody on tiktok comments had the god awful idea for me to save gas receipts um i'm gonna do it because i'm kind of curious but i'm sure i'm not gonna be very happy at the end this is the last time we're gonna see the frosty white tips so say goodbye to those they'll be back at race motive here in a couple weeks everything else in the car is doing perfectly fine smell cool out there for a little bit but it very well could have been from somebody else's car obviously we do have this super exposed radiator so one rocks all it's going to take to end our trip but fingers crossed so we made it about 10 minutes from the gas station and we're sitting in traffic. But we're gonna make the best of it and I'm gonna take this opportunity to give you guys the backstory on this car in case you're not familiar. We bought this thing coming up on a year ago now. Actually found it on Facebook Marketplace. It wasn't a super descriptive ad. It said it was a 1500 horsepower underground racing built R8 that the owner crashed. The first time I saw it, I didn't pay much attention to it. $100,000, eh, it was a little expensive, whatever. The car sat around for a couple weeks, so we finally started talking with the guy. After we got some details on it, we learned that the guy only had it for like a week before he crashed the thing. Unfortunately for him, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, he never got to experience the car on anything more than pump gas. After going back and forth with the guy who was representing the car for a little bit, I threw him an offer of 75 grand. Honestly, I didn't really have high hopes of getting that deal done, but since he immediately realized we were a cash buyer, no BS, he actually said yes. It turns out the owner of the car has done really well for himself, and I think he valued a easy transaction more than anything. So I hopped on a plane to Dallas and drove up to Ardmore, Oklahoma to look at the car. I didn't end up getting there until like, Two in the morning. When I got there, it turns out that the car didn't start unless you pulled it with it in gear. So we pulled it with the dude's skid steer, but it cranked up and honestly, it sounded really good. It was pretty rough. Some of the rear panels were damaged. The front was white. He claimed he did most of the frame damage on the front when he was dragging the car out of the woods with his pickup truck. How true that is, I don't know. But I went out there with the idea in my head that exocarting this thing would be cool, but if not, we could just part it out and make some money on it. Fortunately, once I saw it, I realized this project was actually gonna be 
fairly simple. It had no major damage behind the suspension points with the exception of a bent tie rod. Now this is typically something we would just put on a carrier after paying the dude and ship, but it had a bunch of extra parts with it. A lot of the stuff that was wrecked was still with the car. Generally, I don't like to trust that stuff to a car carrier, so we sent Dalton out there. He drove from Maryland all the way to Oklahoma, grabbed the car, and brought it back. While going through the paperwork we got with the car, we realized it was an older build, I think roughly 2014, 2015, but it was an underground racing, what is essentially their 2R kit. The car had four settings, pump gas at 1,000 to 1,100, setting two on MS109, which made, I believe, 1,200, 1,300, setting three on VPN port, which was 1,500, and setting four, which was supposed to be 16 to 17. After talking to underground, we learned that the car is only limited by the clutch. If we were able to stick one of their race clutches in it, we'd be able to turn it up to over 2,000 horsepower. The car already has their fully built engine, billet transmission, everything the car is good to go once we got the car back we got right to work stripped everything we could that was damaged off of it and sent it up to josh at jch well fab to do all the pipe work of course josh knocked that stuff out in no time flat he built a custom radiator for it and sent it back to us basically ready to go the car had been sitting for almost two years before we got the thing so i had no clue if the thing was actually going to fire up and drive like it should fortunately it did it literally did not skip a beat we did have to add some additional coolers in the front that was no issue everything came out really clean we had to obviously do some lighting on it the fronts are tractor trailer lights the front side markers are off a 2018 and up mustang the rear lights are just cheapo trailer lights we threw a front diffuser on the thing that's actually off an s2000 and we also went ahead and threw apr mirrors off an s2000 on it so the car kind of represents what we're all about here perfectly it is literally a hodgepodge of parts and it couldn't possibly fit us any better but that about sums it up for the history on this car we are almost back to the highway we hopped off to skip a little bit of traffic here so again fingers crossed i will see you guys in charlotte Right. The good news is the trip has went super smooth. I've just been on cruise control. Yes, this car does still have it. The bad news is traffic sucks. I wanted to get down here to Mooresville, North Carolina to check out a ton of these race shops that are around here because it is such a densely populated area of really big name shops. Unfortunately, I got here with about 10 minutes to spare, so I had to pick one. So I swung into Motec and left with a shirt. We have to go about 10 minutes down the road to meet the guy and get this thing off our roof. Then we will jet the rest of the way to Charlotte. So I'll see you guys there. tell we made it to Charlotte. It was a long day of driving so we're gonna go see what Charlotte has to offer at night hopefully get into something good. I will see you guys bright and early for cars and coffee.
won't start with it. I think our car might be more comparable to that than it is the actual other R8s over there. Maybe we should have came over and parked in the old uh, rat rod section here. This is not at all what I was expecting. This is by far the biggest Cars and Coffee I have ever been to. But if this thing is this big, I cannot imagine what we're in store for tomorrow. <laughs> this is not for children. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, absolutely wild there packed full of people that was a great time anybody that hasn't been out to that definitely needs to check it out i was oblivious no longer but we left a little early we got i don't know like three and a half hours to atlanta so hopefully we make good time no more issues and i will see you guys there dealer on 85 here saw it from the highway hopped online real quick and so they have one 17 v10 plus r8 uh, i think everybody myself included has some dct envy lately so i'm going to check it out there was no info about it no color listed just mileage no price so hopefully it's something wild First time I've been on a golf cart at a car dealership. Oh, really? <laughs> So it turns out it was actually a beautiful car. Uh, it was black, it wasn't anything crazy. You guys know I like wild colors. Uh, Chase 1320 has me dying. I mean dying for an orange one of these, but maybe one day we'll find one. Either way, that was only a five minute detour. Well worth it. And honestly, that was one of the better looking black cars too. Black wheels, black interior, it looked good. It never hurts to stop in a place like that when they have absolutely no information on the site. You never know, it could have been like an Audi exclusive color. We could have really got lucky and uh, we could be signing some paperwork right now. But it definitely wasn't for nothing. We, uh, you know, got the official branded water. Now we're rolling in style here. No more smart water. We got the Audi water. But enough of that. Back on road. <laughs> guys we are finally 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 to Atlanta we have a sweet little one room Airbnb that's over a garage it's a pretty sweet little setup not to mention it is the same price for three nights that I paid for one night at a nice hotel last night in Charlotte so if any of you guys are looking to come to Atlanta and want to stay kind of out of the way secluded and if you ask the owner nicely she'll probably let you use her garage I'll put the link to this place in the description but I'm gonna go ahead and get unpacked get the computer set up start pulling this massive amount of footage that I've recorded in the past couple days and then I guess we'll see if we can get into something good in this part of Atlanta
guys, it is 6.30, it's not quite light out yet, and I'm about to head out for caffeine and octane. This neighborhood is dead quiet, everybody's sleeping with their windows open, and I'm about to crank this thing up, so I feel kind of bad about that, but I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. We had a fun low-key night in Atlanta, really cool town, my first time here. I was hunting around to see what I could get into last night other than the usual, and I found a decent tattoo shop that actually had room for a walk-in. I said give me something in Atlanta, they gave me an ice cream cone, I don't really get the relevance, I don't even eat ice cream. But at least it looks cool. I mean, it does get hot down here in the summer. I guess people really love their ice cream. How's it going? Gate pass? Yeah, Audi area. Okay. Look right and then left at the black truck. Black truck guy. Yep. Needless to say, we already knew this. This place is absolutely massive. The show just started like 10 minutes ago officially, but it's already packed. Like every lot I've been to, I can't possibly cover all this. But I'm not gonna make this video about that. However, you guys heard me say I like rare color R8s. If I was to find one in one of these two colors on the lot, we, uh, we might be in some financial trouble. So I don't know the color code on this one, but it's phenomenal. And there is one that's probably even better two cars over. Yeah, we'd be in some trouble for sure. This thing is phenomenal looking. <sighs> Almost makes me wish I had body panels. <laughs> As advertised, this is frankly overwhelming, so I'm gonna go try to do some, uh, I guess, networking if you wanna call it that, but really I'm gonna go hulk Ed Bowley until he says hi to me. Oh, that is so fing awesome. The tubing's bolt on. Another event to go to now, Brunch of Cars, it's right up the street. One of the guys saw my post in one of the Atlanta groups and invited me, so I want to check that out. Yeah, yeah this place was absolutely... 
absolutely wild. It's a fantastic time. I highly recommend if anybody else wants to do a road trip, bring it here. It's a great destination. We obviously have to give a little something, but we're not going to send the thing in the second gear on ice cold tires. I don't want to end up as a meme, believe it or not. Who got steel brakes for sale? It looks nice until you hear the brakes, right? Yeah, it was wrecked. We bought it like this. So this is the way I run it. Yep. I drove it down from Maryland like this. Dead, dead serious, it drives like a stock car. Have a good one, guys. Quick Starbucks stop because for some reason the caffeine and octane, I didn't get coffee. All right, it's too hot for a hoodie. I can't protect this damn tattoo from the sun, so. We got it all clubbed up with athletic wrap. I know I can't be the only one that just starts to uh, feel like crap on road trips like this, especially when you have multiple things planned for every single day. So I think I'm gonna go with the old uh, drink as much green shit as I can and I uh, hope I feel great. just left unfortunately we couldn't record a lot there because the dj was deafening and i don't want to get copyrighted we're gonna head back to the place for a little bit see if we can get into something else fun tonight try to get a jump on a lot of this editing and some other work stuff we have to do tomorrow i finally get the chance to do something that i've been looking forward to for a very long time i'm gonna meet somebody that you guys are likely already familiar with down here in atlanta and they're gonna give you their opinion on the car if that doesn't give it away you just have to wait till tomorrow to see start off this morning with some good news and some bad news. Since we began this road trip, I've been asked no less than 50 times, what are you going to do if it rains? Hey man, what if it rains? You're not worried about rain? Better not get caught in the rain. Every single time my answer has been something along the lines of, hope it don't. And we've been super lucky. It's been absolutely beautiful this whole trip. However, that changes tomorrow. Originally it was a little questionable. It is questionable no longer. It is going to storm its ass off tomorrow. We were supposed to be here another night, hit Chattanooga tomorrow, and then come home on our own time. That would have made Tuesday and Wednesday both travel days so I don't have to have some brutal 12 hour drive in one day. Unfortunately, that storm is quite literally going to follow my route home. It's going to start in the Southeast on Tuesday and be in the Mid-Atlantic on Wednesday. So I'm pretty much screwed. So that leaves me with two options. I either stay in Atlanta for a couple more days, which unfortunately I just don't have the time to do right now, or we do what we're gonna do today and then jet home overnight. And while it might not be the pleasant solution, we're gonna go with option number two, knock out our stuff today and then head home overnight. As much as it's gonna suck, I suppose that's part of the fun and part of the risk of taking a trip like this and I still enjoy it. So fortunately, while we had a couple things lined up for today and tomorrow, we've been able to consolidate a lot of it into today. The one thing we're gonna miss out on, which I'm honestly kind of heartbroken about because I've never been and really want to go, is Tale of the Dragon. We were gonna hit Tale of the Dragon on the way home and we just can't do that now. Dalt was saying something about bringing his mom's NSX down here somewhat soon for an NSX meet, so we'll have to put the pressure on him to do that so at least one of us gets to experience it. But if you didn't guess what we have on the agenda for today by what I said yesterday, we're headed up to Buford to meet up with that dude in blue, David, to do a car review on this. The only people that have driven this car, me, Alex, Austin. This is the first time somebody else is gonna drive it, and what better person to do it? This car is most often described as a death trap. However, that's simply not the case in my opinion. I think it drives like a stock car. I think it's super safe, super stable, so I'm excited to see what he has to say about it. After that, this afternoon, we're still gonna head up to Chattanooga, or as I so lovingly called it in my promo, Chattanooga. And while we're there, we're gonna get to check out the V2 and garage. But it's only two hours out of the way on this trip, so I couldn't resist the opportunity to go finally meet up with him. But we're gonna go put some gas in the car, get some breakfast, and I will see you at David's. What's up? What's up, dude? Ready to do this? I am, my body's ready. <laughs> yeah, when I saw the email for it, I was like, you have me intrigued. So okay, good, I'm that, really stoked. that was the purpose, well, so it worked. It's super, super unique and weird and different because I've done a whole bunch of different twin turbo exotics, but this is whole whole new level. I'm stuttering because I'm like, <laughs> I'm stoked. 
How's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. I'm Alan. This is Alan, who saves my entire career because I'm the worst <laughs> wrench in the world, so he helps me out. Very important, right? I just <laughs> like driving. There's this guy who's still covered in pollen right now. But as you can see, it's a, we're doing a full rebuild on it. Nice. I mean, at least it's just the outside. Wait till you get an R8. The inside's covered in pollen. Oh, was this a flood car? I can't remember. It was a something car. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you could describe a lot of my stuff, a something car. So here's my Civic bill. You did say a playhouse, yeah. and this is definitely a playhouse. Okay. Yeah, so basically my childhood dream was to have a mini wrap. And so it was one of those things, too, where... You know, it's this great childhood dream, but you're scared that you'll have it and then just use it for like a week or a month. Uh -huh. But no, I use it every week and I love it to death. I, I will tell you that when I walked in that door, this is the last thing that I expected to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I actually, people always ask like, why don't you have a lift, all that stuff. Yeah, I yeah. vowed myself not to have this as a car workshop. Yeah. I got the mural done recently. So his name's Armando. He did this all in his head. He just came in and he goes, what do you want? I said, dude, you can do like two of my cars or whatever. And then he goes, all right, and then he painted for 13 hours straight. Jesus Christ. And I would go out and be like, hey, do you want me to buy you lunch? Or buy you? He's like, no, I'm good. So this was helped out by Hybrid Racing down in Louisiana. Sweet. We did this entire thing in nine days. Let's go to my office real quick, and then we'll be done. And then we'll go have some fun. Yeah, this is way cooler than getting to my office. Oh, no, well, I, I needed something to cut. Like, I worked from home for almost 11 years. Okay. Right? And it drove, I, I was getting to that cabin fever. Uh -huh. like, because you walk, you wake up, you walk 10 steps to your office, and then you go back to bed, yep. you know? Um, so, oh good, it's not that dirty. <laughs> so this is my editing room, all that stuff. Super dope. So this is all fan art that was sent in. So this one took 24 hours to draw, apparently. And then, what's funny, in contrast, this one, she drove 15 minutes on the way to meet me at some car meet or something <laughs> in Montana. That's awesome. See, it's cool to have, like, all the different... Yeah, but so, I mean, the white bus thing's so gnarly. It's crazy. Yeah. But it's funny. I was like, oh, this is why I work on a computer. And right. with my hands. Right. Scotty V LEDs up in Ohio made this for me. Yeah, it's pretty rad. So that's going to be like a podcast room side. Yeah, yeah. That's um, perfect use for that. Exactly. Spare office. Those seats are going to go in the blue 240, the Jay-Z 240. Cool. And that's about it. Ta-da. What, uh, what a cool setup you have yeah, here. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. All right, we just finished up with David. Super cool guy. We think the same way on a lot of things, which is always nice. You never know what you're gonna get when you're working with another YouTuber, especially when you're gonna let them drive your car. His fiance asked to go for a ride in it, so they're currently out in it. I can't wait to see what she has to say about it, but I think we finally have the validation that this thing is not the death trap that everybody thinks it is. You know, I'm a Northeast guy. We don't have Publix. This is my first time in one. We're loaded up with the snacks for the road. So as soon as they're back, we're gonna get moving. But you could hear that thing coming from a mile away. So it's rare that I get to see this thing from the outside, especially driving yeah. up, and wow. Now I get it. I get why people act the way they do. Of course. <laughs> so we're going to hear David's opinion about this car in his video, obviously, but let's get his fiance's opinion on it because I think that is a uh, much more raw opinion for somebody who's probably not driving something like this every day. No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been in fast cars, but this is completely different being completely too chassis. For so sure. I love the crazy hair, the wind, <laughs> and the sound that it gave me, so... Uh, definitely made my stomach turn. I uh, ten out of ten. Good, good. Yeah. That, that's that's what we aim for Thank here, you right? Thank so much for letting me ride along. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, ready to hit the road again. Thanks, David. We will have to do oh, it again yeah. when we build something else. Like Please this. let me know. I'll come on up for to sure. Maryland sometime. It'll be awesome. For sure. And for the two of you that don't already know, that dude of blue on YouTube. That's right. Once again, that was an absolute blast. If you want somebody to review your car, if you have something cool, definitely hit him up. Super professional. Didn't scare me in the least, which obviously you get the wrong person in a car like this, it's bad news. But we have a two and a half hour ride to old Chattanooga to visit Mr. Tune himself. I will see you guys there. Needless to 
say I did not expect to run into this beautiful beaver in Tennessee, Georgia, wherever we're at right now. TX2K just a couple weeks ago was my first Bucky's experience and I am hooked. And I know I'm not the only one because as our fellow 1500 horsepower car road tripping friend in the great white north of Pennsylvania, Street Speed lovingly calls it, Bussies, he is a fan too. So you're going back to Maryland? I'm going to Chattanooga and then uh, Maryland, yes. Came from okay, cool, cool. Those are GoPros on the top. He's giving out free gaps. How many miles per gallon do you get? It's not that bad. Really? Something probably like 20. You get more than me. Pro yeah, what do you drive? A Q50. Yeah, probably. What the fuck? <laughs> I went to my first Bucky's like, I don't know, two weeks ago in Texas. Yeah. I'm a fan. Obviously, you guys are too. We so. This as a joke. I love it, right? So there are very few times on this trip where this car isn't the center of attention and the, the Bucky's beavers here just took attention away from it. So that's something. Look, Wawa, it's not you, it's me. Anyway, our 20 minute stop at Bucky's is done. We're gassed up, fed. Said I wasn't gonna eat more gas station food, but I mean, Bucky's kind of really isn't gas station food, right? That stupid suit is absolutely blazing hot, but considering we now have to drive overnight in the cold, I might be wearing a beaver costume the whole way home. So anyway, who wants to go see Mr. Tuned? place is sweet it's tucked away what's going on man how's it going, how's it going? Up, Yuri. all right we just went for a little rip did a little two three pull on the highway had a van come over on us got a little hairy but all is well now you got to show me what you have going on inside the shop Hold on. Uh, basically this is my 65 mustang right here built this entire front end I'm doing a coyote this thing is dope so you, you guys built all this in-house yeah nice what uh what suspension setup is this it's just cortex racing it's full custom front suspension cradle so it's, it's not gonna drive like a like a 60s Mustang. No, it's, it's <laughs> I, I like old cars like this, but I can't do, you know, the whole oh, classic yeah. cruiser type thing. So this is, I dig this. So what was the uh, what was the deal with this thing? Was it wrecked, oh, it was obviously? Screwy, light quarter panel damage in the back. Gotcha. Bad. Auction car? Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, actually, Boom Squad bought it. Okay. Parts, they took the engine out of it, and then it turns out the engine was blown in it, so uh -huh. it kind of just sat there, and then to pick it up. And of course, I mean, I can't miss this thing. Yep, so. that's in the corner right there. So what's the uh, what's the backstory on this thing? Well, I bought it destroyed. Oh, on a scale of one to ten, how destroyed? It was a ten. Okay, okay, yeah, destroyed, destroyed. destroyed. The whole entire front end was just ripped off. Carbon fiber tub cracked. So basically, every inch of this car I had to reassemble myself. It looks good, except some of the issues, like this door right here is touching the fender side. So, I had to put it right so that's the uh, yeah, that's the reason for the uh, paper towel. Yep. And then, well, the funny thing is, that's like actually a factory default. Okay. Like, I was watching some videos, like, people were roasting McLaren's, so they're like, look, the fender's touching on the passenger side. Because I was adjusting these doors for like two hours. Yeah, I mean, I'd be pretty upset if I bought a McLaren and it did that. Like, really, really upset. <laughs> the build quality isn't the best on these cars. But, I mean, I put everything back together. I've already put like a thousand miles onto it. But I still don't have the rear diffuser. I gotta get that. Nice. And you said it makes 750? I think 750 or 800. Mm -hmm. through on video as well as it does in person because it sounds absolutely phenomenal. It might be because I've been driving the R8 and it's loud, windy for the past 800 miles, but this thing is like really tame and quiet inside too. It, feel, it feels really good. I mean, I don't know if I have the heart to ask the people watching my video if they like that one better or that one better because then I'm going to be really mad if they say they like the McLaren better. This one's for uh, summer driving, this one's for rainy days. Yes. Yeah, you know you've made it when you can have a McLaren as your rainy day vehicle, but one day, right? All right, well, as much fun as we have had today, it is about time for that to end. As you guys know, we have some weather coming through tomorrow and Wednesday, so we have to get headed home to Maryland right now. I will put it in the GPS here shortly. I think it's somewhere between 11 and 12 hours, whatever it is, it uh, definitely is not gonna be the most fun. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna be able to grab a hotel tonight or I will actually have to drive all the way through. 
all gonna depend on what the weather's like. Appreciate you showing me around, and uh, next time I'm in the area, or if you're up in Maryland, you gotta stop by the shop, gotta check it out. For anybody watching that doesn't know who you are based on the cars, tell them where they can find you. Be tuned on YouTube. Cool. Thanks for having me, and uh, super awesome McLaren. Thanks for giving me my first ride in a 720. Uh, I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing because now I might have to come off some money at some point. Uh, it's not too bad. It's less than 10. I will take that. So if that estimate is right, it puts us there at roughly 4, 4.30. Maybe add a little bit for food, gas, all that stuff. I think I'm just going to go for it. I think we'll try to do an all-nighter. It's not like we get there at 8 in the morning. That'd be a little tougher. I hope to see you guys very shortly back at the shop in Maryland. All right, it's not even dark yet and it's freezing. I, uh, I think we're in for it, boys. Our boys here at the Wythe County Sheriff Department were nice enough to watch over the car while I was inside uh, trying to find something to eat. And uh, they have kindly asked me to start it up for them. So that's what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. I appreciate it. So we've had it 187. Uh, on a uh, on Pocono Raceway. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll sell it. I've told other people that this weekend. I will leave it here. I will fly home if you want to cut a check for it. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, it's not a nice route because I would love to, you know, take 20 for a ride or you know at least get on it for you. But I have to say, this is the first time. A police officer asked me to actually get on it for them. It's, uh, it's permission, and unfortunately, because of the temperature, the tire temperature, the fact that it's dark out, I can't do it, which is a very big missed opportunity, but maybe one day, maybe one day. A couple notes. I have five shirts on because it's freezing. Every bit of clothing I have is now on my body. Um, next step is the beaver costume. I hope we don't have to take it that far. Two. As suspected, this car is getting phenomenal gas mileage. Almost 20 miles per gallon. I mean, dude, how, how can you beat it, right? But anyway, we have another six hours to go. At least we had a little bit of fun there, a little bit of uh, adventure. You know, when you walk out the door and see a couple of police cars sitting by your car, sometimes it's a bad thing. Fortunately, in this case, it was a good thing. I don't even know where to start. Um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This sucks. A lot of you guys probably remember that I bought a Rudnick's Lifted Miata in the middle of December, drove that from Florida to Maryland. I overpacked cold weather gear for that because it's a convertible that had a broken top. We're driving it in December. We did most of that drive during the day and honestly, it never got bad. That car also had working heat. This drive was supposed to be all during the day. Obviously, we had to call an audible and change that up, assuming it was going to be 60 degree plus and sunny the entire time. So I underpacked cold weather gear. Um, it is about 40 degrees out and the car does not have heat. As you guys might already know, it also does not have doors. Um, so we have about 80 mile an hour wind coming in. This is far and away the coldest I've ever been in a car. Don't get me wrong, while complaining now, I will be itching to do another stupid road trip in another stupid car sooner than later. But for now, for the last three hours and the next three, which we have left, I'm gonna be regretting it. We got the Bucky suit on. Obviously, I bought this thing as a joke, but we need all the help we can get right now. We got some beautiful gloves here from inside 7-Eleven. We have a couple energy drinks because I'm also pretty tired at this point, um, but, I guess can't really talk about it much where we got to get to driving. ETA is about five o'clock, so I think this is the last gas stop we'll have to make. So hopefully the next time you see me, we'll be back at the shop. <sighs> Guys, we fucking made it. I've had the heat cranking in my Tesla for the last 15 minutes. I turned it on right when we got on the Bay Bridge. It is, I mean, this has been absolutely brutal. But before we go any further, I am gonna go cook myself in the Tesla and hopefully thaw out and hopefully begin to feel my toes again. And then we will wrap this up. And for the final time of this trip, all right, I'm thawed out, didn't lose any toes, we're all good. Obviously, we had a little more planned for this trip. 
didn't get to do it all. That's how it goes, I suppose. Again, I can say it with more confidence now that that is part of the fun of doing stuff like this. Again, it kind of seems like road trips and sketchy cars are becoming a thing with me. So if you guys like it, let me know in the comments uh, and maybe I will pick up something else to do something similar with. Or better yet, maybe I'll find something super sketchy halfway across the country to buy and drive it back. I am pretty positive that I look and sound like hell at this point, but please do not let that distract you from the fact that I had an absolute blast doing this. I want to thank everybody that came out to look at the car. I was super excited to meet all you guys and talk cars all weekend. It was very fun. As a few of you guys may know, after being in the salvage industry so long and dealing with cars on a day in and day out basis, it kind of ruined my passion for the hobby. Unfortunately, messing around with the YouTube stuff and kind of interacting with some of you guys and getting back out there a little bit has certainly reignited that in me. So thanks for that, guys. With that said, the numbers, how much did we spend on gas and how many miles did we put on it? I've been telling everybody we're doing a thousand mile road trip. Um, we did hit that number. In fact, we blew it away. We did 1,737 miles. The car literally did not skip a beat. It was phenomenal. And now that I can officially say that I've backed up my words saying I would have no problem taking this on a thousand mile road trip, I can say at this point, though I'm not gonna do it, I don't think, I would drive this to California. No problem. As for what we spent on gas, you guys already know, it gets phenomenal gas mileage. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. Nobody else believed it, but it's backed up with a large sample size now. It gets 19 miles a gallon. Absolute insanity. We did some quick maths on the gas receipts, and we had a grand total of only $412 spent, which is insane. I fully anticipated spending way closer to a grand. Didn't happen. You're not going to hear me complaining. As for how the car held up physically, it's filthy, like disgusting filthy. However, everything else is intact and we really beat on this thing a little bit with David. You'll get to see that in his video, but the car took it like a champ and kept on going. The only minor issue, if I have to pick one, is towards the end of the drive, the front tires got a little loud. You kind of see it's feathering there. It's doing the same thing on both sides. If you are still watching at this point in the video, I appreciate that so much. I'm really glad that I was able to take you guys along on this journey with me. I had a ton of fun. Again, I hope you guys did enjoy it. We have so much other cool stuff in the works right now from salvage cars to more road trips to collaborations. So if you're into it, make sure you subscribe, like, share, tell a friend, all that good stuff, comment, I think that's probably it. You guys don't need to do anything else. With that said, I will see you guys next time. I don't know why I'm still talking to the camera, to be quite honest. It just feels weird to put it down at this point. That's going in the video. <laughs> it is? I'll show you something. <laughs> so it was like. So you took that footage. Had a few drinks. Uh, I mean, it's not like we had 100 shots in Charlotte. Beautiful Miata. Well, I can see you guys can. Sorry. Death trap. And people don't believe me when I do these breaks. Man, God. He's doing his vloggity vlog. Vloggity vlog vlog. Video. As we have a mouthful of plantain chips. Let's see. I see. I still have to like reset. reset. Yeah.